Hey everyone, it's David from Oberlo, and today I'm going to walk you through how to build a Shopify store that's integrated with Oberlo. From top to bottom, we're going to cover everything you need to know to launch your own dropshipping business. At the end of this video, we're going to have a fully fledged store ready to take to customers. All great dropshipping stores start with great products, so let's find ours. We're going to jump over to my screen now, so if you want to follow along at home, fire up a new tab or a new browser and head over to Oberlo.com. Okay, here we are at Oberlo.com, and all we need to do to get our Oberlo account is click on the Get Oberlo Now button. You're going to have to punch in your email and a password, but that is it. There's no credit card required. You're not going to get a link in your email that you need to confirm by clicking on it later on. Just email and password and you are ready to go. The first thing you see when you get inside of Oberlo are a bunch of different product categories. Men's clothing, women's clothing, toys, beauty and health products. Now these are among the most popular categories for Oberlo merchants. Below that you'll see product recommendations. They could be seasonal like these Halloween items. They could be best selling products which are products that our merchants have had a lot of success with. Fast shipping items are ones that have really quick shipping times, etc. So there's some recommendations that you're going to see from the moment you log in. If you already know what you want to sell, you can go up here to the search field. Now we do know what you want to sell. Our store is going to specialize in athleisure. Athleisure is stuff like leggings and other athletic wear that people can wear either around the house or when they're out and about. As you can see, when you punch in leggings, there are a lot of different options that pop up in the product search results. If you want to hone in on specific types of leggings, for example, with certain prices or with certain shipping methods, that's no problem. We have a bunch of filters here on the left side of the screen that will enable you to refine your original search. So here I'm going to say that I want products that cost under $10 and which feature ePacket delivery. ePacket is a really quick shipping method for products that are coming out of China and it is what we recommend if you are sourcing your products from China. So now we have products under 10 bucks that have ePacket. Now that we have our search filters in place, there's one more tweak that we can do to our search results to make sure that we get exactly what we're looking for. And that is change the sort by filter to orders count. With this orders count sorting filter in place, we now know that all the products that appear in our results are products that have been proven to generate orders. So we're not having to guess at what will be popular. Oberlo has done that work for you and is showing you only products that have generated orders. So now that we know that these are popular products, that these are products that people want to buy, we can add them to our import list. Simply clicking on add to import list will save the product and let give you a chance to edit it before you bring it over to your store. So let's add a second one here to our import list and we'll add a third item that will help us get started and then we can go into our import list and edit them and make sure they look exactly like we want before we send them over to our store. Okay, so we have three bestsellers added to our import list and we're going to go and check out how they look in the import list section. Real quick, before we get into changing these product names and product descriptions, I want to point out that the products that we just sent to our import list are from Oberlo Verified Suppliers. Oberlo Verified Suppliers are our most trustworthy suppliers and they meet rigid criteria that dropshippers are going to be looking for to run their businesses. Uh, for example, they fulfilled at least 1,000 orders for Oberlo merchants. Oberlo Verified Suppliers also have very low error rates and quicker delivery times. There are two other types of suppliers that you'll find inside of Oberlo. One set is Oberlo Suppliers. Uh, they're also part of our network. We like working with them. They just haven't hit the thousand order threshold that the Oberlo Verified Suppliers have. And then the third set is AliExpress Suppliers. AliExpress is an independent platform with independent suppliers. And so we can't say for sure um, if they're going to meet these same criteria that the Oberlo Verified Suppliers are. Uh, you can find a lot of good stuff on AliExpress. It's just uh, you'll have to do some homework to make sure that the suppliers you're using are the ones that you want to be using. All right, this is what your products are going to look like when they're inside of your import list. There's four main sections. There's the product overview where you can change the title. There's the product description, product variants, and product images. First off, let's change the product's title. Some of the titles you'll notice that you import into your import list are a little bit wordy. And so we're going to 
consolidate this one and just call it women's sports and yoga leggings. That's straightforward and to the point. Uh, we can optimize it later if need be. Now here's the product description that came with this product. And as you can see, it's a little bit goofy. So for example, here at the top, it says worthy yoga pants move up. That's not the sort of thing that you want to appear on your product pages. So almost every time that you import a product, you're going to edit the product description. Here, we're going to drop in some text that uh, we already wrote. Uh, we're not going to make you watch us write a product description, but basically if you've worked with any text editing software, any content management system, uh, the overload product description editor works in much the same way. So now we have some text. Um, there's different approaches to product descriptions. Uh, this one will work for now. The variance tab is where you can see different sizes and different colors of the product that you imported. So we have the base product, which here is offered in four different sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. You can also tweak your prices here if you want to increase your margins or offer a better price. And finally, the images. Uh, products are going to come with different images attached to them. And by uh, checking any of these additional images, you can make sure that they end up in your store along with your product. Uh, it's really important to have product images. Ideally, at some point, you're going to be taking your own images. But for now, we'll use these ones that came with the product. We're going to go ahead and update the titles on these other products as well. And while we do that, let's just touch real quickly on some of the basics that you want to include in your titles and product descriptions. So search engine optimization is one thing that you can really implement on your titles and descriptions. Put in any keywords, any phrases that you think people interested in your product will be searching for. This is a great place to do that. You also want to be sure to answer any questions that people might have in your product descriptions. Um, look at what your competitors do. Look at what uh, the product descriptions say on other websites and see if there's common themes, common uh, specifics about the products that are always talked about. Maybe there's uh, weight or length or color uh, details that appear all the time. Those are things that you can go ahead and make sure are in your descriptions as well. And then finally, you want to make sure that the writing here has some life. Um, make sure it's punchy and that somebody um, not only is finding the information they're looking for, but would be uh, engaged by what they find on these pages. The product pages where these descriptions and titles appear, um, those might be the first pages somebody gets to when they get to your store. And so when they get to your store, you want to make sure not only that they get the info they're looking for, but that they like what they see and that they um, are interested in what they find there. Let's go ahead and finish up selecting these images. And remember, the images that you import here into your store, uh, it doesn't mean you have to show them. You just give yourself the option to show them. So we're going to go ahead and bring over these six here. And now it's time to connect Oberlo to a store. Now, to connect our Oberlo account to a store, we're going to go up here and click on the Connect a Store button. There are two things you can do here. The first is enter your Shopify store URL if you have one. We don't, so we're going to click Create New One. This will take us to Shopify. Shopify, as you might know, is the leading e-commerce platform in the world. They power some 600,000 stores, and it is the platform that integrates with Oberlo. It is just as easy to sign up for Shopify as it is for Oberlo. You're just going to give your email address, a password, and your store name. We're going to go ahead and punch in our details, including our store name. Shopify is going to check automatically to make sure that nobody else has taken this name yet. In our case, Life of Athleisure is still available. And now we are just moments away from having a store. There's going to be a couple basic questions that we need to answer here. The first one, are you already selling? We are not. We are just launching our athleisure store, so I'm not selling products yet. And then the second one is about revenue. We don't have revenue yet, so we'll put in zero there. Click Next. And now there's going to be some basic address information. Real quick about this form. If you're like me, then you might not always take forms like this totally seriously. You might fill it out less than 100% accurately. But we're not signing up for a newsletter here. We're starting a business. And so with all these details about your address and your postcode and your phone number, go ahead and fill them out accurately because uh, if things go well, we're going to start making money. And when we do, we want to have a legit business behind it. After we get this form filled out, we are going to land for the first time inside of our Shopify store. 
This is the Shopify dashboard where you can find information about sales and orders and visitors. Of course, we don't have sales, orders, and visitors just yet because we don't have any products. So to get products, we'll make sure that everything that we put in our import list gets to our store. And to make that happen, we'll head back over to Overlo and put in our Shopify store URL. For us, that is lifeofathleisure.myshopify.com. And after you punch this in and, clicked connect, and click connect a store, Shopify and Overlo are going to be integrated. The next screen you see will have details about how exactly this integration works. And after you review this, you're gonna to wanna to click on install app and you're going to be ready to go with an integrated Shopify and Overlo account. The next step is going to be to set up some default behaviors for how Overlo and Shopify interact. So there's a lot of different options here and you can change these after the fact, but it's a good idea to go ahead and set them up as best you can now. So here, the first checkbox you see, set new products as published. That means anytime we push something from Overlo into Shopify, it'll automatically be available at our store. You can also change your tax settings, change your weight settings, notify customers about order fulfillment. Um, and then these auto updates at the bottom are important. So when a product is no longer available in Overlo, you get to say what you want to happen in Shopify. So here we'll say we want the product to unpublish, that means not be available, and we want to receive a notification uh, when a variant is no longer available. A variant, remember, is the size or the color of a product. We can say that we want the variant to be removed and to be notified, and if the cost of the product changes, we can say, do we want Shopify to update it or do we want it to just remain as is? Again, these can be uh, changed later, but it's a good idea to set them up as best you can now. While we are inside of Oberlo changing some settings, let's check out the global pricing rules. The global pricing rules gives you a chance to set default pricing rules for how much products will cost inside of your Shopify store. There's two different options here. The first is multiplier, which lets you multiply whatever you paid for the product by a certain number. And the other one is fixed markup, which gives you a chance to have a designated dollar amount uh, over the original cost that you will charge your consumers. So here, if we have fixed, uh, uh, if we have a multiplier of 1.5, the product will be 1.5 times more expensive in our store than what we paid for it. There's also an advanced pricing rules section that you can use uh, if you have a wide range of prices that your products are going to cost. There are, of course, lots of different things to consider when you make your global pricing rules. You need to think about how much you're spending on marketing. You need to think about other costs that you're incurring, such as apps that you have in your store, different things that are costing you money that you need to incorporate into your prices in your store. But the good news is that you can have default, regular rules that you can assign to products automatically, and you create those here inside of global pricing rules. Now that we understand the global pricing rules, it's time to get some products into our store. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our import list. We see here we have those three items from before, and here they are with their updated titles and descriptions and images just as we uh, edited earlier. And we're gonna get these all into our store with just a couple clicks. So we'll select all three products, then do import all to store, confirm that, and all of a sudden our import list is empty, but that's just because they have now been moved over to our store and you can find them in your Shopify products. And voila. Now that the products are in our Shopify backend, we are getting closer and closer to having a store. But before we launch, we wanna make, su make sure that the store looks and feels exactly how we want it to. And to do that, we are gonna check out the different Shopify themes. The theme is like the backbone of your store. It's gonna dictate how your store looks and how it functions and how the navigation acts when people uh, come there to shop and to look around. Shopify has tons of different themes that you can explore here. So we're gonna click on Explore Themes where we see a lot of beautiful different styles of websites. 
Now, a lot of these are paid. They're gonna cost 180 or 160 bucks. Uh, these are super powerful and they're customizable. And this is what uh, hopefully one day we need as our store blows up. To start though, we're gonna use a free theme. And these free themes are mobile ready. They are perfectly functional. And as we're just getting started, they're gonna be powerful enough for us. This Brooklyn theme, as you can see, is tailor-made for apparel stores, and it looks like it has everything that we want. There's also a couple of different styles, the classic and the playful. Uh, because we're having an athleisure store, maybe the playful will be better for us. We can check out how this looks and how it feels when you click around. Uh, Shopify gives you a demo, uh, and I think that our athleisure wear will look beautiful on these pages. Here's even how you would check out and add something to your cart. So you get the full scale uh, test inside of the theme store, and this one looks good. So let's go ahead and add the theme to our Shopify store. This takes all a few seconds, and bam, we now have access to the Brooklyn theme in Life of Athleisure. Now that we have added the Brooklyn theme to our store, we can make it our official theme by clicking on Actions and then Publish. It's gonna ask you if you're sure that you want Brooklyn to replace the default theme, which is called Debut. Uh, we are sure Brooklyn is a winning theme, so as soon as we click on Publish, it has all of a sudden become our store's theme. Clicking on Customize, will give us a little preview of how our store looks at this point. So there's lots of placeholder text and placeholder images here. We'll make sure all of that looks pretty in just a moment, but at least you can see our store is starting to take shape. We now have different sections. There's some default items like this newsletter a field and uh, places where we're invited to put images and text. So our store is not there yet, but as you can see, we are well on our way. Okay, let's give some life to this store and we'll start at the top in the header. So when we click on header, we are invited to upload a logo. Now I got logos for Life of Athleisure from Hatchful. Hatchful is a Shopify service that generates logos for you automatically. So you just tell Hatchful uh, what industry you're in, you tell them what you're selling and give them kind of some broad parameters for how you want your a logo to look and then they're gonna give you lots of different options. So here we have the black background option that doesn't quite work for the header. The background's a little bit distracting, but that's no problem because Hatchful also has a transparent background option. So this one is cool, but it doesn't have any text. So let's go ahead and upload the one with text. So now we have the icon as well as the name of our store, Life of Leisure. So that'll look cool at the top of this page. Now it's super easy to change uh, how this image looks. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger, and you're gonna have automatic previews of how that looks. The default setting was 260, so we'll stick with that. And now we are ready to go with our logo at the top of the page. Now that we have this logo in place with the transparent background and the name of the business, we can go ahead and save that and lock it into place. But there's still some work to do here on our home page. This is, after all, where a lot of our visitors will land as soon as they come to our store, so we really want it to pop. So we'll click on Slideshow and then edit the content of the different slides that the Brooklyn theme offers you. So we'll follow the same process where we upload an image. Uh, we are going to use a fun image of somebody in leggings on the beach. This kind of fits the, uh, the attitude of the store. We want people uh, to, to feel like they're having fun and um, to see all the cool stuff that you can do in the leggings we're selling. So we will go ahead and select that. But one of the cool things about Brooklyn is that you can have multiple pictures here that uh, rotate automatically. So the second part of our slideshow, uh, again, same steps, go to upload. We'll put in yet another fun leggings picture. Here's someone who is getting ready to play around on a skateboard wearing leggings. I'm having a ball, I'm sure you are too, so this will work for our second element of the slideshow. With these images uploaded and now in place, we can customize exactly how the slideshow behaves when people get to our site. So we can uh, determine whether or not the images 
auto rotate or if we want people to uh, click to see the second image. And we can also determine exactly how long we want each image to display before it changes if they are rotating automatically. So we're gonna keep it at five seconds to try to increase the chances that somebody will see uh, multiple cool images when they get here. So we see the beach, then we see the skateboard. And as this is preview mode, you can check out how your theme will look on different devices. So now we'll click on the smartphone and this is what it will look like when people arrive via mobile. So you could update this and tweak this uh, forever. Uh, this is good enough for now to get started. So we'll go ahead and save and continue making our page look, our homepage look exactly how we want it. The Brooklyn theme suggests a certain uh, order or a certain layout of how your homepage should look, but it's really easy uh, to rearrange or even delete some of these elements. So for example, this custom HTML uh, option, this is really cool. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility and options, but uh, we are not there yet with our store. So instead of playing around with code, we are just going to delete it. Uh, and then we're also going to rearrange how these things appear. So right now the featured collection is the first item that somebody sees uh, after the slider, but we would rather have them see something else. So we'll put the newsletter at the bottom. We'll get rid of this custom HTML form and then move uh, the image with text options as the first things after the slider image. So as you can see, it's really simple uh, to rearrange or to get rid of uh, these different elements. Of course, you can put them back in. Uh, if later on you, for example, want the custom HTML option, that's no problem. But this looks like a good layout for our store uh, to begin with. Now we have this placeholder text and this empty image spot. Uh, on our homepage and let's go ahead and put something in there that's gonna pop and resonate with our visitors. So nothing like a good leggings picture. So here's somebody working out in leggings and then the, uh, the text that we put here should just kind of reflect uh, the way you want people to feel about your store. So, you know, we have pictures of people on the beach and skateboarding uh, in our slider. So we clearly have kind of a playful, uh, easygoing theme and the text that you put here uh, should reflect that. So we don't want anything too serious. Uh, we have people smiling and having a good time and our text should also uh, make people smile and have a good time. I'm just gonna dump in uh, some random stuff here. Uh, we could optimize this uh, all day, but for now this will work just to get us uh, moving along with our store build. So athleisure time is your time. Do you, that'll work for now. We're also gonna add a button to make sure that if somebody uh, wants to shop and not just hang out on the homepage, they are never more than a click away. Uh, shop now is not the most clever uh, button text, but uh, it should be clear enough for any visitors. So we'll put that there and we'll link to our products. And now we have a call to action and some text and a beautiful image that people will see. And then we'll go through again the same process with this uh, second image with text section. Of course, you do not need the image with text section, uh, or if you want, you could have even more. But again, we'll try to choose a pick that is somewhat playful. So here's somebody messing around um, outside on some train tracks. And again, the, the text should just in some way reflect the, the feeling or MO of your store. An athleisurely stroll, this is playful. Uh, get some text in here and we will be on our way. As we fill out this text, let's just uh, think about some of the things that we want to do with our homepage. Again, it's the first impression that your store will have on your visitors. So we want it to be a good representation of, of what you're about and what your store is about. And there's no perfect way to do this. Um, you could rearrange things in, in any format you want. Um, the colors, the text, the size of everything, uh, it's all highly customizable and there's not some magic bullet. You want your store to stand out and there's a lot of different ways to do that. And it's also important to remember that you can test different formats, different calls to action, um, different pictures and see what works the best. Uh, because you're not locked into anything permanently, um, you can make adjustments and then look later on uh, at your analytics, at your orders, at your sales and see if 
something that you did on the homepage, the way that you arranged things, the way that you presented things had a good impact on your store. You can see here at the bottom of the homepage, the Brooklyn theme uh, lets you insert a featured collection. So let's talk about what collections are and how you would create a featured collection to put there. Oh, here Shopify is making sure that I save my changes before I leave. Shopify has a great user experience, and so you won't ever lose changes that you've made uh, without them asking you first to save it. Okay, now collections. Inside of your product section, we'll click on collections and then create collection. Now, collections are a really great way to make your site easier to navigate. So think about your favorite e-commerce shops, and I'm sure they have different collections of men's clothing or women's or seasonal items, things that are on sale, things that are new. It's just a way to kind of break down your store into different elements that people can easily look at. So here we're gonna create a newest items collection. And this is just gonna be, as the title suggests, a collection of the newest products that we have in our store. And it's really easy to create a collection. We're gonna name it, we plugged in a description, and now we simply need to save it and then determine which items we want in there. Uh, for us, this is gonna be pretty simple. We only have three products and they are all brand spanking new. So after we save the collection name and description, we go here to the products field and choose the ones we want. Uh, once our store is built out a little bit, this dropdown will be bigger, but for now, this will work. We wanna sort them by not best selling, but instead something like newest, that makes sense for our newest items collection. And now we have a set of three products that are self-contained inside of this collection. So this is saved automatically. And now we can go back. Here it is if we wanna update it later or edit it, but that will be saved for us. And now we can play with that collection and create new ones in the same way. All right, now that we have this collection, Let's quickly hop back into Overlow so you can see how the Shopify collection integrates with your Overlow products. So now we have recommended items for us. And as you can see, the recommendations are legging. So Overlow, even after just a few minutes, is already getting to know us and get to know what we're looking for in our store. So let's import another set of leggings and then look at how we add them to a collection. So everything is just as it was before, but if we go here to collections, we're gonna be recommended this newest items collection that we just built over in Shopify. So as you can see, it's super easy to import an item directly to a collection once you have it in your Overlow import list. Okay, let's hop back into the Shopify backend and see where our store stands at the moment. So you can click on this preview button and go navigate around and kind of get a feel for what a customer might uh, might see if they were to land there right now. So these images and text, this all looks familiar. This is what we were just building. Our featured collection is there. When we click on a button, the behavior is just as we would expect. We see our products and we can click on any of those if we want, uh, but we're not ready to start shopping yet. Instead, we're gonna add a few more things that every e-commerce store should have, namely an about us page and a contact page. So to do that, under online store, we click on pages and then up here in the top right, we'll click on add page. The first page we're gonna build here is an about us page. And the about us page is a great chance for you to relate to your customers, to tell them what you're all about, to tell them why you're into the product you're selling. It's really a wonderful opportunity to be personable with your visitors and with your potential customers. Uh, we're not gonna devote a ton of time to this text here. We're just gonna drop in uh, a little bit of text, add an image, and then uh, call it a day for now. But again, this is a potentially really impactful uh, way to, to turn visitors into customers. And uh, there's a lot of content on the Oberlo blog uh, about how to create the perfect About Us page. And I encourage you to check that out because there really is a science to this uh, when it comes to what you want to include, uh, what you want to leave out, and the sort of details that customers are gonna be looking for when they get to your store. The second page we're gonna create 
is contact us. Now, we need to make sure that our customers have a way to get in touch with us if they have questions, if they aren't familiar uh, with how the shipping is gonna work. Um, there's any number of things that somebody might want to ask you uh, before they pull the trigger on a purchase or even after they make a purchase. They might have a follow-up question or want to inquire about something else. So it's really important that we give people the chance to get in touch with us um, no matter where they are in the, the buyer cycle. And this is especially important if people aren't familiar with your store just yet. We have this awesome information available and now we need to make sure that our customers and visitors can find them. So we're gonna add them to our top navigation menu. To do that, you uh, go to the navigation section and we're gonna click here on main menu. Main menu is the stuff that's sitting at the top of your store. So right now, as you can see, we have a home link in the navigation menu and a catalog link. We're gonna add another one, and as you might guess, it's gonna be the About Us page. This way, if anybody has any questions about who you are, what your store is about, they're gonna be able to find it right there at the top of the page. We'll go ahead and put in the contact details as well. The contact information is a really good way to kind of put people at ease and to let them know that, hey, it's a real person on the other end of this store and you know they're so real, I can go ahead and get, get in touch with them uh, via this contact page. Uh, we're gonna take off the home link. Uh, we don't need that there necessarily. And then we're gonna rename the catalog link uh, something else a little catchier than catalog. For now, we'll put it as shop. Okay, so now we have a three item navigation bar and when we click on save menu, these items are gonna automatically be added to the site. We'll again hit the preview button and there we go. Shop, about us, and contact. It's all there on the top navigation. This is the sort of stuff that people are gonna wanna see when they get to your store, so it's a good idea to put it front and center. There's a couple things I can see that we're gonna need to change uh, with the layout, just a couple quick things. So let's get back into the design mindset and go into the customized theme section. And we're gonna, first off, swap out the logo that we just saw when we previewed our site. Um, this dark black background isn't quite working. It doesn't look as sharp as this transparent background. So we've already uploaded the transparent one. So all we need to do is swap those out and hit save. And now we have a pretty transparent background logo, no matter what page we navigate to. The second little design tweak that we're gonna make is adding a favicon. Now the favicon is this little tiny icon that you see up here in the tab. Uh, Shopify has a green one, Overlo has a blue one, and we need to put something there for ours because right now we don't have anything. So you find the favicon section and then just upload the image that you think is gonna work best. I'm not gonna use the logo with the tagline because there's not a lot of space to have these words. So instead, I'm just gonna use this red emblem, this red icon, and that should be enough to let people know which page they're on if they're just looking at their tabs. So now if we go to the front end and refresh, we have a favicon up in the tab, and here is our cool new transparent background logo. Before we go on, I want to make sure that you know about all the cool stuff that we have at the Oberlo blog, the Oberlo eBooks library, and the Oberlo YouTube channel. These are awesome resources to help you with any of your questions about dropshipping, e-commerce, marketing, social media, you name it. We will have a video, a blog post, or an ebook that will answer your questions. So be sure to check out those places if you get stuck. Now that our store is looking more and more beautiful, we are sure to make some sales, and that means that we're gonna have to iron out our shipping details. Now here is the Shopify shipping overview page. And you can see here that our domestic shipping zone is Germany, which is where we are located right now. And we're gonna add shipping zones to make sure that our products get where they need to go. So the big uh, zone for us is gonna be, we're gonna call it the big four plus Europe. Now the big four are the United States, the UK, Canada, and Australia. And these are huge markets for overload merchants. Uh, we've written about this over at the blog. These are markets that you will want to target when you get your ads up and running. So we're gonna add them to our primary shipping group, and then we're gonna go ahead and put Europe in there as well. Now, instead of tracking down each and every European country, we can just scroll to the Europe section, tick one checkbox, and now we have all of Europe covered. So now our shipping zone, Big Four Plus Europe, uh, has all the countries we want, and because these are our focus countries, 
we are going to have free shipping there. So we will throw a name on here, which customers will see at checkout. We'll call it free international shipping and we'll set a free shipping rate. So this will apply no matter how much money somebody spends at our store, they will get the product for free. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now we have a free shipping group for our big target markets. Of course, the US, UK, Australia, Canada, and Europe only cover so much of the world. So we need to account for the rest of the countries out there that might also be placing orders. So to do that, we'll go to this rest of the world section and create a group of countries that we don't necessarily want to ship to. So if we go down here to the bottom and click delete zone, you can see that uh, locations in these countries will not be able to place orders. And as we start our store, this is what we want. We want to simplify things and we don't want to be worried about shipping rates for South America or Africa or different parts of Asia. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to focus on the big four markets and Europe and just make sure that we reduce complexity here at the beginning. So now we have our free shipping countries. We have our no shipping countries and we need to go ahead and customize the shipping details for our domestic shipping, which again for us is in Germany. We want to include Germany in our free shipping offers. So we're going to uh, set uh, the, the price to free for Germany, regardless of how much money they spend uh, per order, it's going to be free shipping. And so now this is a way to make sure that not only our domestic market, but also our international markets have free shipping options. All right, shipping zones are all set. And the next step will be to customize our checkout process. So in our settings page, we'll click on checkout. And actually here, uh, the default settings are going to work uh, great for us. We don't want our customers to have to create accounts. Uh, we don't want them to uh, have to put in their first and last name. We don't want them to have to put in their company name. So Shopify does a really good job uh, with their default settings. Of course, you should go through these and make sure uh, that it matches what you want your experience to be at your store. Um, but for now, we are just going to keep these default checkout settings. This is going to work just fine to make sure that our customers uh, have a nice clean checkout process. Of course, a big part of the checkout process, perhaps the most important part for us is the payment. So let's go into our settings and into payment providers to make sure that everything is as we want it. So by default, we have Shopify payments enabled. Um, we have to recommend Shopify payments. It's really good. They accept all major credit cards. Uh, the fees and rates are as good as any competitor. So this is enabled by default and we recommend that you, you keep it there. So there's going to be some information already filled in here. Um, as you register, uh, this is from your original sign up with Shopify. There's a few more additional details you have to put in, uh, your date of birth. There's also going to be a section to put in your tax identification number. This will be a little bit different, perhaps, depending on what country, uh, what, which country you're in. Um, but basically, it's, it's uh, essential information to make sure uh, that you get paid and that, uh, you know, there's a real person linked to your bank account, just kind of security measures that Shopify takes to ensure that everything is on the up and up. Now that our Shopify payments is set up, we can take a look at the other payment options that are available. You can see by default, PayPal is enabled. Um, the only trick here is to make sure that it is linked to an email address that has a PayPal account. That's important. Uh, and then there's other options as well. You can activate Amazon Pay, or if you have a specific preference for other alternative payment methods, there's a laundry list that you can choose from here inside of Shopify. Uh, you should be just fine if you use Shopify payments and PayPal, but again, uh, there is an extensive list of options if you're looking for something additional. One more little technical detail that we need to iron out. So let's go back to settings. We're almost there. Just stick with me. Click on this legal section and here is where we're going to fill out our different policies, the refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service, etc. Now, this stuff can be kind of scary, but luckily Shopify has gone ahead and created templates that we can copy and use for our store. So when you click on the create from template button, uh, Shopify will pre-populate this section and you're going to want to go ahead and look through it. There are some details in here uh, that you might want to update. Uh, there'll be an address and an email address in here. So you want to make sure that all that stuff is exactly how you want it. Uh, for the refund policy, there's also dollar amounts. Uh, that stipulate how much somebody might expect to get back if they do ask for a refund. So you need to make sure to look at these details, but thankfully uh, most of the hard work has been done for us. 
this is all written in the proper legalese and it will remind you of the sort of documents that you would see from any major e-commerce shop. So after you go ahead and do the create from template buttons, uh, if you don't want to write it yourself, which I clearly don't, we're going to click save and then now these will be saved as part of our website. Of course, having these different policies sitting in our Shopify backend isn't going to be enough. We need to make them available to our shoppers, to our customers. And so we're gonna go back to the navigation section and put them into our footer. Uh, these steps are gonna remind you a lot of how we built the main navigation bar on the homepage. Uh, the difference, of course, is that the footer will be at the bottom of the website, not at the top. And so it'll be a little bit out of the way. And the reason that we're gonna put them in the footer and not at the, uh, at the top of the website is that these are very much technical details and they should be uh, available for people who really seek them out, but it's not something that we want people uh, to find the moment they arrive at the site. The top navigation bar uh, should be about generating trust. It should be about generating conversions and making sure that uh, people know about all the cool offers you have. Um, these policies, on the other hand, are vital, but they are far from cool. And so they're, something, they're the sort of thing that we're gonna wanna stick at the bottom of the page uh, to make sure that, again, they're there, but they're out of the way. So here we're gonna add our fourth and final policy, the legal notice, and then we click on save menu. Now, the next time we go check out the front end, which we'll do here in a second, these should be there in the footer navigation section. So as you can see, our top is still just shop about us and contact our images and texts and collection, email subscription as we left it, and here we go, the policies. So anybody who wants them can find them, but they are not gonna be front and center on the website. Nice, okay, so our footer contains all this vital info. Now let's go to online store and get rid of the password page, which is currently blocking people from visiting our site. When we click on disable password, we're gonna be invited to pick a plan. Now, pick a plan is the part of this process where you need to pull out your credit card and uh, you know choose some things that have dollar signs next to them. But as you can see here, there is no risk. It says if Shopify isn't right for you, we won't charge you. You still have uh, however many days are left in your trial to make sure that Shopify is the service you want to use. And so don't worry, after you fill out your credit card information, there will be no charges until your free trial period is over. After we pick our plan, we are gonna be navigated back to our main Shopify dashboard and be asked if we want to add a domain. Uh, we do want to add a domain to make it easier for people to find us. Uh, at the moment, the URL of this store is life-of-athleisure.myshopify.com. We cannot expect people to be putting uh, that URL in every time they wanna to come to our store, so we need something a little snappier, like lifeofleisure.com. Shopify is gonna scan the web, make sure that's available. And if it is, you just click buy and this is gonna cost $14 per year. Uh, you can have this auto renew if you want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and untick this box. It's super simple to uh, reactivate the auto renew feature. Either way, we'll click buy domain and then we will be charged 14 bucks for one year's worth of our very own web domain. Now we have our domain and we can see here that Shopify has gone ahead and created a few vital email addresses for us. So info at lifeofathleisure.com as well as sales at lifeofathleisure.com are automatically uh, gonna be synced to the email address that we use to sign up for Shopify in the first place. So uh, of course, info at yourwebsite.com uh, is gonna be a lot simpler for people um, and it's also gonna be a, a way for you to have a very legitimate looking uh, contact page so you can direct people to an info at address. Okay, we are almost there. We have our policies in place, we have our domain bought, our shipping zones, our checkout, everything is in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and officially disable this password by clicking here. This is in the preferences section. We'll save that and now our store is live. There's a view store button here. I think it's more exciting to go ahead and type in the actual domain that we just bought. So we'll punch life of athleisure into Google Chrome and there we have it. This is the first time anybody has officially navigated to our store. 
Uh, it's a work in progress. I forgot to change the text here where it says hero banner that clearly could be optimized. But the point is we have a store. So let's go ahead and make a purchase to see how the customer journey will look for somebody who wants to buy themselves some athleisure wear. Here's one of the buttons that we created a little while ago. It says shop now. We are directed to our product catalog. These women's mesh pattern print leggings are looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color. I like the black ones more than the light gray. We'll make this size large and then add that to the cart. Now this theme, this Brooklyn theme has a cool uh, feature here where when you add something to the cart, it pops in from the side of the screen, at least on a desktop. You can go ahead and click on checkout and then we're gonna go through the steps of the checkout process that we just customized. The information that gets inserted here uh, during your checkout process is gonna be automatically integrated uh, with Oberlo. So the information is being inputted into Shopify, but the integration that we set up earlier between Shopify and Oberlo will ensure that all these details get passed over to Oberlo, which will enable you to get this order placed with your supplier and get it shipped to the customer's door. The next step for the customer is gonna to be to select a shipping method. They're in the free shipping zone, so that's gonna be the default choice. When they click on continue to payment method, this is where they're gonna put in their credit card or PayPal details, and then we are on our way. After those details are input, you'll remember that we set up one final confirmation page to let customers check out exactly what they're ordering. Here they take one more look at their address and the cost after they agree to that. There's gonna be a confirmation page which lets the customer know, hey, here's what you ordered, here's where we're gonna ship it, and here's how much you paid. Everything is uh, very much out in the open and transparent. So that's how it's gonna look for your customers when they place an order. And then here is how it's gonna look for you as the merchant in Oberlo. So we're gonna go back into Oberlo and here is the Oberlo dashboard. Now, as you can see here, we have sales and we have earnings and we have a top item. There's also an order to fulfill. So let's check out this order, which is this uh, orange icon here and go see what has been placed. There we go. There are our women's mesh pattern print leggings. This is exactly what we were just looking at at our store. And because this is an Oberlo verified supplier, all we need to do to fulfill this order is click on order products. We don't need to navigate to a third party website and then place the order there. Everything is gonna happen inside of Oberlo. We just punch in our credit card details. And so this is the money that's gonna go from us to the supplier. And then the supplier is going to ship the product directly to the customer. So there's a few different transactions taking place here. The one is customer to you. And then this one that we're looking at right now is you to the supplier. We're gonna choose ePacket as our delivery method. You can see there, it's gonna be $1.50. If we select a different method like DHL, it's much more expensive. So ePacket is what we want. This is gonna be a total cost of $8.99. Uh, $8 as you remember, the cost to the customer was 11 euros and 99 cents. So a tidy little profit for us. So to recap, we selected products in Oberlo. We set up a store in Shopify, and then we pushed those products from Oberlo to Shopify. And then we made our store look and feel more like a store. And it all took about an hour. Sure, there's plenty of work to be done. We have to update our text and our descriptions. We need to order more products and nail down exactly who our best suppliers are. It's not like what we did today is some money tree that will let you quit your nine to five. But hey, at the same time, it's not bad, right? Is there any part of the store build process you'd like to know more about? Do you need help with any particular step? If so, let me know in the comments. I check them all the time and we'll get back to you with an answer. Until next time, learn often, market better, and sell more.